Hello everyone, how's it going? I'm Wow Krendor and welcome back to another episode of Pointless Top 10, a show where we make top 10 list out of pointless things. Why are we flying by this pointless statue in Booty Bay? Because inside pointless things are treasure. Let's begin. That was my spooky Halloween Hollow Zen voice. I hope you liked it. Um, hey, number 10 is the Stormwind City Cemetery. Uh, that is the number 10 graveyard and I picked it here because, hey, I mean, it's a pretty big graveyard. Uh, apparently Arthas might be buried here. Uh, there's no confirmation, but a lot of people assume that he is. Um, King Varian and his wife Tiffin Rin are buried here. I think that's how you say her name. Um, so yeah, a lot of very important alliance people and just, you know, could be Arthas characters in general are buried here. And then, uh, it's kind of a, you know, at nighttime, kind of a spooky graveyard in general. I mean, you look around, there's guards walking around. There's all these candles lit everywhere. They got the green flame candles too. Uh, you got the stones, you got, you know, this guy didn't get a proper burial, but, you know, not everybody, <laughs> not everybody gets a proper burial. And then there's squirrels. Look at this squirrel. He's just walking around on graves like it's nobody's business. He's just like, hey, he probably doesn't even know what a grave is. Or does he? Nah, he probably doesn't. Number nine is the Scarlet Monastery Graveyard. And I had to put the Scarlet Monastery Graveyard on the list because... Uh, I remember it from way back in Vanilla WoW, even though it does look a little bit different now. And it is the home to the Hollow's End event where you have to kill the Headless Horseman and not get his mount because I've been trying to get his mount for forever. I got it on my EU character, but I don't play my EU character, so I just don't care is the thing. Uh, and now I've been running it like five times a day on all my different characters on NA and I'm not getting it. So uh, watch me just not get it on NA. That'll be great. Either way. I think it's a it's a cool graveyard. There's like grass growing up. There's these dead trees. There's these sepulcher tomb style things. Uh, you know, there's statues. There's burning stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It's a cool graveyard. All right. And one of the coolest things in the graveyard are these little demon guys on the gravestones. And I don't know if they're just here or at other places in the game. Either way, it's pretty neat. And it's number nine. Number eight is the Kodo Graveyard, and I picked the Kodo Graveyard here because it's such an interesting and unique graveyard to the game. Um, if you read about it from the Warcraft role-playing game, uh, it says, Mighty as the reptilian Kodo beasts are, they are not immortal. Those that feel the approach of death make their way through Thousand Needles to the plains in Eastern Desolus where they eventually perish. No one knows why the Kodo beasts come to this particular place, but it is a habit long maintained. This area is filled with bones, as well as the sick and the dying. It is far from peaceful. However, as everything from scavenging raptors to mighty lions come to feast upon the aged Kodo beasts, which is kind of sad. Um, and apparently the concept comes from the elephant graveyards, where I guess in real life there's a mythical thing about elephants doing the same thing. I don't know. Either way, there's another cool thing where if you come here while you're dead, you can actually see the level 60 Kodo spirits. So how about... For Halloween, just go jump off a mountain and run over to the graveyard and say say it's hi, say it's hi to some Kodos, friend, yeah? Just, okay, I can't talk. Number seven is the Necropolis in Nazmir, so we've actually got a, a more recent graveyard. Um, and Necropolis is the temple of Bonsamdi, yeah, everybody's favorite, Bonsamdi. Uh, either way, <laughs> uh, it's kind of cool, you can see all the spirits getting sucked into there. Uh, you can see all these ghost trolls kind of just making their way towards the actual necropolis temple. Um, and it's just, it's a really cool sight. Like, you could just stand here and watch this happen all day. Although, I don't know if you'd want to. You just, <laughs> I mean, it's like setting up a tent and, like, getting the old barbecue out. I mean, like, look at that. This is quite a sight seeing all these ghosts get sucked into that necropolis right there, Jimmy. Uh, you know, hey, to each their own. Some people watch NASCAR, some people, you know, go knitting, and some go to the Necropolis Temple to watch the spirits go there. I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's number six, seven. That's number seven. Number six is a Derek's Repose, and repose actually means to lie at rest or lie dead. Thank you, Wowpedia, for that information. Um, but yeah, it's actually a really cool looking graveyard. Uh, some of the Greymane families buried here. Obviously, this is in Gilneas. Uh, there's just some trees. There's the water. There's the misty, foggy rain. Um, there's some cool-looking gravestones. It's just, it's a nice, eerie graveyard. Uh, with 
very eerie dull colors and that's what I think I like a lot about it. And there's also a lot of bodies that are being burned and again from Wowpedia, possible reasons that the bodies are burning are one of the more, one or more of the following. Forsaken Plague Warfare, The Worgen Curse, Too Many Dead in Recent Days to Bury Them All, and or Not Wanting the Banshee Queen to Resurrect the Bodies. Uh, so that's kind of crazy. They just burn the bodies because they don't want Sylvanas like raising them up. Um, overall, it's a pretty cool graveyard. It's got some lore attached to it, and it's number six. Number five is Brill, and I wanted to read some history of Brill because it's actually pretty cool. Brill was once a small town within the human kingdom of Lordaeron. It was one of the earliest towns to become afflicted with the plague of undeath that would eventually cripple the northern lands. It was at Brill that the necromancer Kel'Thuzad, still a living man, first started his experiments with the plague that would come to be the demise of the kingdom of Lordaeron. The success of the infestation was such that it allowed Kel'Thuzad to convince the Lich King to launch the invasion even before it was planned. The mass graveyard just outside of Brill was made to accommodate the large number of deaths Tirasfall suffered when the plague first came. The town was investigated by Prince Arthas during his mission to uncover the source of the plague. Following the weakening of the Lich King due to the spell cast by Illidan, Sylvanas' rebel forsaken were able to quickly assume control of the village, along with numerous other sites in Tirasfall Glades. The citizens of Brill now fight daily to preserve their freedom against their enemies. So that's a little backstory to Brill, and I think knowing all that is good enough to put it at number 5. Number 4 is Telenor, and I didn't even realize how well that rhymed until right now, so I think I put it at the right place. Number 4 is Telenor. Um, <laughs> anyway, back to Wowpedia. Telenor is a massive graveyard in a ritual site overlooking Suramar City. Uh, it serves as the final resting place for many famous night elves, some having lived over 10,000 years ago. The site is sacred to the elves of Suramar, who often pay tribute to their ancestors interred in the cemetery. Interred? Interred. Interred? I don't know what word that is. Uh, now it's invaded by harpies and uh, withered nightborn and shit, and they're just destroying everything. Either way, it's a really cool looking graveyard. <laughs> uh, I love the colors of it. There's night elves crying over their lost night elf family, loved ones, friend I don't know. There's night elf, ghost night elves that cry over graves. It's pretty neat. Uh, <laughs> there's these really sad night elves crying. It's pretty funny and neat. All right, listen, Telenor is number four. Number four, number three. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm still stuck on Telenor is number four in my mind. I can't get it out of my head. Um, number three is Field of the Fallen Kings. And I don't have any lore information for you about Field of the Fallen Kings, except that it's a very cool graveyard. It's a very cool graveyard. Um, sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, in Stormheim, and it's pretty much everything I expected from an actual, like, very cool Viking graveyard. It's just, it's almost like you're buried in the land, and you just become one with the land again. They have their shields and their swords, uh, next to the big stones that they're buried against. There's not really many actual gravestones, it's just big rocks, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, if you go to certain parts, there's uh, skeletons coming out of the ground, or going into the ground. If, okay. Number two is this really cool graveyard in the mists of Pandaria called the Shrine of the Unseen Force, where these big tiger statues are overlooking a bunch of gravestones up in the mountains. Uh, and it's a very majestic and kind of solitary type of graveyard because, you know, there's not many people there. It's way up in the mountains, but it's right by this big temple. Uh, I learned about it actually from the Warcraft Less Traveled website, which is a website about exploring and discovering, you know, kind of secret stuff in World of Warcraft. So shout out to them. Uh, and they put on here, in addition, visitors will find a solitary shrine with a bizarre swirling light called the Unseen Force. By clicking on the Unseen Force shrine, players will be given a hidden buff that grants plus 90% to hit. So I just thought that was really cool. I thought everything, you know, looked really different and it was more of a unique graveyard compared to a lot of the other ones. So I put it at number two. And number one is the Raven Hill Cemetery, and I had to pick Raven Hill and Duskwood in general just because when I think of creepy stuff in WoW, my mind instantly goes to Duskwood. It's dark, it's dreary, there's dead trees, it's one of the original WoW zones. Uh, and I wanted to read a little bit of lore about it. Raven Hill is an abandoned town located in western Duskwood. This ghost town once took pride in its honor for the dead. It held a mortuary school that graduated the finest embalmers in Azeroth. The undead killed the town. 
The inhabitants attempted to fight their loved ones that rose from the graves, but eventually gave up and fled east to Darkshire. The Defias Brotherhood tried to set up camp in the town after the citizens fled, but even they couldn't take the constant attacks by the undead. Some citizens remain, including a master embalmer called Abercrombie, who lives near Ravenhill Cemetery. A serious man, he works both to stay alive and to stop the undead, or so he claims. Ravenhill is possibly the origin of the massive Black Riders, huge beings that suddenly appear with hellhounds at their feet to run down frantic travelers. Some nights, they skirt the perimeter of Darkshire, howling loudly. Similarly to Darkshire, Ravenhill was likely not the original name of this ruined town. In Warcraft 1, there is a town named Sunnyglade, which seems to be at the location where Ravenhill is located. The town might have been renamed sometime after the First War, like Darkshire. And after learning all that about it, I was like, shit, dude, this has got to be number one. Okay. Okay. See ya.